Hey guys, Joe Pye here, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Welcome back to my shop. Today's video is going to cover a very basic, very basic topic that is going to assist, I hope, a lot of people out there just starting out in this trade. So if you're not just starting out in this trade, well, hang in there. You might find something interesting here that you didn't know before. Maybe not. But please realize that there's a lot of members of this community that are not tradesmen, don't get to do this a lot, and they need the basics as well as the advanced stuff. So that's what this is going to be. And it's about threading. Now, I know that a lot of people consider threading some kind of voodoo, black magic, don't know how to set the machine up kind of thing. Now, there's a lot of videos on my channel, in my video catalog, on threading, but I don't know that I've ever really stressed this particular point and I continue to see it on a lot of other forums. A well, quick story for you. One time I got a job, and I stayed with this job for a very long time. I was running an engine in the experimental division at a company in northern New Jersey. And the foreman walks up to me on the very first day after I got done with all my paperwork and HR mumbo jumbo and signing off your life. Came over to me and he said, is there anything that you know that you're not comfortable with? And I said, yeah, writing especially internal threading. He goes, he goes, all right, well, there's your bench. Go put your tools down and uh, I'll be right back with your first job because that's how they did it. They would just bring a whole cart of things over to you and let you have at it, hopefully to print. The very first job that he brought to me was 150 aluminum knobs the size of baseballs with through holes and the only thing that needed to be done was threads. So I looked at Joe, which was his name as well, and I said, Joe, I told you that I wasn't comfortable with threads. He looked back at me and said, well, you will be when you're done with this job. And he was right. Repetition will do two things for you. It will make you really good at something. You don't even think twice about it, which a lot of us older tradesmen, we just do things naturally because we've done them a thousand times. Or it'll burn you out, and you'll hate the very mention of the word or sight of the task. And hopefully that doesn't happen to you in a machining environment unless you're a production worker and you can't stand your job, then you get another job. All right, let's take a look at the way the compound has got to be set up to run a successful thread. And this is absolute basics. So stick around, take a look at the setup behind me. Let's do it. Alignment of your compound. This is very important to cutting a successful thread. Let's say this is the thread profile itself, right there, 60 degree triangle. If the lead screw on your compound is not within the 60 degree boundary of the thread profile, you're going to get a ratty stair step edge on one side of your thread and the other side is going to be great. And you're going to step back and scratch your head and say, well, I don't know why it's doing that. That's why it's doing it. Side of the compound assumed is in line with the lead screw of the compound and you can see this one is not in line this angle here is different than this angle here they must be parallel or within in order for it to work and when you do that chances are this is going to move which means the tool is going to move with it your tool must also be perpendicular to the axis of the machine perpendicular to the part okay Simple. That's all I wanted to express on this one. Lead screw or the side of the compound within that 60 degree projected halo from the thread profile. I don't care what this little scale down here says. Sometimes it's going to say 60. Sometimes it's going to say 30. Fact of the matter is, go with the physical setup, ignore the numbers, but then look at the numbers and say, oh, okay, now I know what I'm looking for next time. But this has to be second nature, guys, in order for you to run a successful thread lead screw Within the boundary, bueno. Tool perpendicular to the work, all good. Next best piece of advice I can give you right now is don't let the first thread that you run on your machine be the first thread that you need. Put a piece of scrap in there and play. See it. See the engagement. Check the half nut feel. Put a little drag on the hand wheel. There's a lot of videos on this channel With advice on how to do just those things so check the playlist on my channel look for the advice on lathe operation general lathe setup that's it keep that in mind super important boom 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 there we go 
All right, well, I know that that was pretty basic information, but if you've never heard it before, then it's not so basic, right? So for those of you that knew that, thank you for hanging in. Well, before I close this video out, there's been a couple of things that I've seen in the past, and not maybe recently, but seen in the past, that I would like to throw my opinion or two cents into the, into the pot for consideration, if you will. One was a video on what to expect on your first day as a machinist. Well, you would hope that that advice would come from somebody that's actually ever spent a first day as a machinist. I think I qualify. So I'm going to tell you what to expect on your first day. Not a first day in a new shop. First day as a machinist. Nerves. Absolute top of the list. Nerves. Maybe right parallel side by side with excitement. Because this is something you're probably doing it because you want to do it. So you're excited to get after it. Don't expect them to throw you the world on your first day. They're going to give you something stupid and mundane and probably really low priority on the list of things that are important to that company only because they want to feel you out. They want to see what you got, how much you pay attention, uh, your detail, the things that you do, the way that you work, how fast you work, just a whole mixed bag of observations from a management or a foreman standpoint. They're going to watch you because if you make a mistake, you're going to get hurt. You're going to cost them money. You may crash a machine, whatever. You can expect some of the guys in the shop to embrace the fact that they, hey, there's a new guy here. Let's get to know him. Then there's going to be the old codgers, the, the old stuffy guys that are like, I don't want nothing to do with that kid. Ah, he doesn't know shit. Sorry. That's what you're going to have. Half the shop's going to love you. Half the shop's going to hate you. But ultimately... Your performance is going to speak volumes of who you are, and uh, good luck. You know, if it's something that you really wanted to do, stick with it. Ask a bunch of questions. A stupid question is way better than a stupid mistake. Keep that in mind. Next video, what tools to buy to first, for your first day on, on the job? I'll tell you what. You want to know what tools to have for your first day on the job? Ask the guy that gave you the interview when you went to apply for the job. Don't just go out and stock up on a bunch of stuff that you may never use. I think that's a really poor piece of advice. The core materials, the core tools that most people will have or expect you to have at the very least. Safety glasses, you're probably going to get them supplied to you when you show up. But if you show up with your own, it shows some initiative on your part. So safety glasses, a one-inch micrometer, a six-inch scale. That's it. Don't run out and spend hundreds of dollars on tools that you may never use because it's just a wasted money. Evolve as you progress in that position in that shop. And a good rule of thumb, a rule of thumb that I have followed my entire career is if you borrow a tool more than twice, go buy it. Because the guy that you bought it from, he spent his money on that tool and he didn't spend that money so you could continue to use that tool. It's a courtesy. If you use a tool, take care of that tool, clean it and return it and say thank you if you want that resource to remain in place. Anyway, that's about it. You got any questions, comments, leave them in the comment line below. Check out the web store. We got some good swag for the Christmas holiday. And if you're watching this after the Christmas holiday, well, chances are still stuff in inventory. One metric clamping kit left. One six inch as we speak right here. Bunch of Imperials, bunch of pins. T-shirts will be restocked. That's all I got for you. Thank you for hanging in as usual. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today, wherever you are in the world. I hope you are well, happy, and safe. All the above. I'm Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Hey guys, a little bonus material for those of you that hung in this far. Bike is complete. I do not have the badge on the tank yet, but this is a Honda 750. Engine is bored out to 836. It is an F model, so it's got the hotter cam and the bigger carbs. Electronic ignition at this point. K&N cone air filters, Delcovic 4 into 1 headers, Comstar wheels, and the Tri-Disc braking system.
candy red paint job. I don't know if the camera's going to do this any justice, but this is an absolutely spectacular paint job on here. My son did that for me. Rear fender is a Fat Bob Harley fender. That is a King Queen seat by Corbin Gentry. I think it's Corbin leather seats now, but back in the day it was Corbin Gentry. Well, let's take a listen. I'm sure that's what you want to hear, right? Stay tuned, give you some photos from the road.